AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's the second Tuesday of the month, which means it's time for Feeling Great with Lissa and Nate, and they're going to teach you how to sprout beans, and they're going to make a raw vegan sprouted chickpea sweet curry salad. Please welcome them back. Hello, how are you guys doing? We are doing great. Doing great. It's been a while. It has been a while. No, we had the bundle. We were so busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And then, you know, there's been a lot of stuff happening in our personal oh life God. too, yes. that's been kind of like throwing all our plans up in the air and stuff, but we're, we're good. Yep. We're good. <laughs> we're good. We're, we're good. And we're here. Stuff and things. And yeah, but we're happy to be here with mm -hmm. you yeah. and sharing this. Um, yeah, this, this is like a new thing that we started doing. So we really want to share more about it because it's all oh, so This good. is going to be so cool. Let's get into it. Yeah, I can't wait because this is timely because this Sunday we had a meetup and one of the members said that he, he was diagnosed with cancer and the doctor said to do all raw, but he, he said, I'm going to miss starch. Is there any way you can eat starch when you're raw? So maybe that's the answer. Yes. yes well, yeah. that's a real bummer deal for your friend. That is really awesome, though, that the doctor recommended to go eat more raw or go yeah. raw. That's amazing. Yeah. Yep. yeah, that is amazing. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people are afraid that they'll be hungry if they don't have starch, myself included. Yeah. Well, people will be hungry if they don't eat enough, that's for sure. And starches are delicious. <laughs> so what we could do is we can sprout some beans and legumes and these sorts of things are great. And uh, the best way to do it is to not only sprout, but after they've been sprouted, to freeze them. Yes. And then when you want them, you thaw them out and they have the texture as if they have been cooked. Yeah, I know. It's super, super cool. Mm -hmm. So the only beans that I would avoid sprouting would be the larger ones. And especially, please do not sprout red kidney beans. That's right. That's no, no red no. kidney beans. No but, red kidney beans. No. Um, you know, the bigger beans like black beans and some other ones, if you're going to do them, just have a small amount of them. But chickpeas, lentils, mung beans and regular peas, black eyed peas, those are all, you know, good to go. You can make and eat as much as you feel comfortable eating of those ones. So, yeah, this is so what, we, what Nate mentioned about the freezing technique. Now, I've never enjoyed sprouted chickpeas just sprouted out of the jar. They're too, I don't know, they're harder and they've got like a, kind of a, a fresh, fresh flavor, which I don't mind, but you know, when you're, when you're wanting the, the spe specific chickpea-ness, you know, yeah. like, like the actual texture and the flavor. The yeah. yeah. Um, I thought that it would be cool because we do the freezing technique with so many other things like onions and cauliflower and, um, carrots and celery for like our raw soups and everything I was like let's try freezing the sprouted chickpeas and see how they are and as soon as I did that I was like what? they're amazing yeah and the lentils as well yeah. the red lentils sprouting those for did you 36 hours or was those it, ones or 48? I, sprout, uh, I soaked for 18 hours maybe almost yeah, it was almost two days soaking. So and then yeah. I sprouted them for two days after. So you'd start them like when you get home from from your eve, you know, from work, let's say, or before you go to bed. Let them soak all night and all the next day, and then the next evening. Mm -hmm. Then you just sprout them. Like mm -hmm. then you could rinse and drain for a day or so until you get little tiny tails that are about, you know, they're just peeking up. Just right, just barely. Peeking. Because if you let them go longer, then you've got all these tails, which is fine. Yeah. But if you want the texture and the look of, you know, cooked lentils, of a bean, a, a lentil, yeah, then you want to freeze them as soon as they start to have that little tail. That's they're ready to go. They're ready. They have that. You can eat them right then. Yeah. So, but what's a great thing to do is to uh, strain them out, you know, rinse them real, real well, and then put them in a bowl and freeze them. Mm -hmm. Put them in your freezer, and then when you want. To have those in a meal, you just take them out. You can thaw them with a little bit of warm water, and they are amazing. They taste as if they've been cooked. Yeah, we made a, a lentil soup yesterday. Oh my gosh, that was next level delicious. And we've got a lot of recipes like this coming in May in a new ebook that's coming. But yeah, so definitely. So we want to teach how to do the actual chickpeas. 
because we've been doing a lot of chickpeas. Now this bag, um, I put a link to this specific one from Anthony's in the description box if anyone was interested, but we will do this entire three pound bag at one time. It fills three gallon um, jars. Half gallon. No, the gallon ones. These ones? The big, big ones. Yeah. These are a half gallon. Oh, they're half gallon? Yeah. I'll ne I never can figure it out. <laughs> That's a 64 ounce jar. This is a 32 ounce jar. So basically, yeah, you're able to fill, it's a gallon and a half worth of, uh, worth of chickpeas. Yeah. So each, so what I do is I get three of these jars and I put one pound of chickpeas in each jar and then I fill it to the top with clean water and we let them soak for 48 hours, 48, 48 hours. hours. And they absorb the water, so they'll expand. Look, our cat, he never gets on the counter. There's nothing up here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, for 48 hours. But yeah, as Nate was saying, they expand because they absorb the water. Now, what a lot of people do when they sprout chickpeas is they don't soak long enough. Mm -hmm. They'll only do it overnight, yes. for like 12, 16 hours. That's what we would do too. Yeah. We would soak overnight and then start to rinse and drain like we would do the other sprouts. And they just don't turn out the best. Mm -hmm. So we found one of the major tricks was to let them soak for 48 hours, two full entire days. Yeah. And then after that... We just transfer a sprouting lid with the mesh onto the top and then we rinse and drain and we tilt them so that the water can drain out and we rinse and drain three times a day for a, one day. You really don't need to sprout them a lot long after they've been soaked. And then some of them might show little tails, but even if they don't, they're ready to go they're and ready. you can just portion them out into cups. Like we have these little cups um, that hold one cup yeah. of chickpeas. <laughs> And we bought all of these cups, these little Tupperwares. So once we have all yeah, of so our chickpeas done. You can get just some little Tupperwares and just portion them out, put the lid on, and then just put these in the freezer, just like that. Yeah. And then you can grab the chickpeas. And then this here, yeah, this is that container that I took out earlier today. And you can see that it is, you know, just it, I mean, it's, it's really, well, it's one cup exactly. Mm -hmm. I just thawed them out in some warm water, which will take the strainer and strain out the water, rinse them real good. But here we go. Yep. So that is basically how we make the chickpeas. And you can do a similar one with, like we said, lentils. Um, again, soak for 18 hours, sprout for one or two days. But the chickpeas, the chickpeas. is definitely a game changer for yeah. us because now we can make hummus. And we've tried to do hummus in the past, but just we didn't have the sprouting and the freezing um, kind of like dialed in. And this new method, oh, it is so amazing. Mm -hmm. It's brought so much like extra variety yeah. into our raw diet right now. So sprouted chickpeas, who'd have thought? It's a new thing. <laughs> so we're going to do just a little bit? Oh, we're no. Gonna, no. no. Okay. No, okay. We have, we have we a lot. Did, I did a pound bag just maybe two weeks ago and we've got so many chickpeas in our freezer now so yeah. we're just saving this bag I just wanted to show everybody kind of what it looked like yeah this but. is definitely such a game changer so grab some of those and try that out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes uh, question question I don't want to miss it from an Instagram viewer uh let's see I just lost it every now oh <laughs> Where'd it go? I saw it. And the question is, wh okay, why shouldn't we sprout black beans and kidney beans? Asks Bernadette. So kidney, red kidney beans specifically exactly. have high levels of something called hemagglutinin in it. It has nothing to do with gluten, um, but it's, it's, it's a lectin, but it, it has such a high amount of it you actually have to cook red kidney beans at extremely high temperatures to get rid of the hemagglutinin. And there have been cases, I actually just read about a case that happened in Denmark, I think, where there was like a lunch catering company and they didn't cook the red kidney beans long enough at a high enough temperature and it made everybody sick yeah. because of the hemagglutinin. So even cooking red kidney beans, you need to be careful with yeah. that amount. 
And the bigger beans, like broad beans and black beans, and like some of the bigger ones, they do have a higher, little higher level of hemagglutinin in them. Um, not not anywhere near the red kidney. Red kidney is like just totally off. It's, it's in a category yeah. of its own. <laughs> but we just, you know, we don't do a lot of black beans. And if we do, it's like we each have a tablespoon. You know, we've we tried do. sprouting of zuki beans, and I don't know. Personally, I just don't really enjoy sprouted beans very much the lentils the chickpeas i'm i'm all about but the other beans we haven't figured it out yet i know some people we've bought in some uh some sprouted mixtures that have some black beans in them um you know along with other sprouts and stuff too and lentils and the chickpeas and such and they're not bad um but i don't know like i just i personally just don't really prefer i'd rather not even have the bean or I'm not against necessarily having some cooked beans once in a while. So I would just mm -hmm. rather have some cooked beans. Uh, but the sprouted chickpeas is really great. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I would just, you know, err on the side of caution and just don't do the red kidney beans. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but black eyed peas are a great option. And I'm like you said, the azuki beans, we know our friend Chris Kendall loves the sprouted azuki beans. And maybe it's our batch of beans, but Could I don't know. Bad. For some reason, they have a, a an interesting flavor. So they yeah. were in that soup that I made the other night. Yeah. So yeah, it was yeah. decent. <laughs> I just personally don't really prefer them. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's all just preference. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, definitely, it's it's really important to try different uh, variations of times yes. for the soaking because maybe the azuki beans, maybe we're not soaking them long enough. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, test mm -hmm. it out and see for yourself. But the red kidney beans, yeah, definitely <laughs> don't even try sprouting those. Those ones have to be cooked. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Let's All right. get started on the sauce dressing. Um, we're it. doing the dressing first for the salad before we chop everything because we want to like put the chickpeas in the sauce to let them marinate a little bit while we chop the salad. So That's Nate's right. going to make the dressing. It's going to be a sweet curry. Mm. And we are very excited for this one. It's cool. As we say, every time we're on Chef AJ, well, on your show, uh, we always have lunch after. <laughs> That's right. We have a little lunch. I'm just going to cut these lemons up real quick because we're going to need some lemon juice for this dressing. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing on our list for this dressing, and this is a pretty good uh, amount of, of stuff that's going in this dressing. Um, but as you can see, it's just basically right here on the table. I already kind of laid it out. So it's not like too much. Really what it is, is we've got a lot of seasonings that are going to make this thing so Ooh, amazing. So, so I've got one cup of water in the blender first and foremost. We've mm -hmm. got five dates that are going in there. Let's get our lemon juice. This is calling for three tablespoons. I believe you have three tablespoons mm -hmm. of lemon juice. And with the dressings, you can kind of play around with the amounts. Like if we had a quarter cup of, of lemon juice in there, it would still be fine. It would just be a little more lemony. Or if you didn't want it as lemony, maybe do two tablespoons. It, you know, you can play around with the amounts, especially the spices. As we always say, always start slow with the spices because you can always add more, Right. but you can't take away if you add too much. Right. So <laughs> there we go. We've got our lemon juice. What's next here? Oh, apple cider. Okay, so right here we've got our apple oh, cider yes. and our miso. So it's just one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. And the miso is optional, but we're going to put the miso in there as well. We've got a tablespoon of, of miso. Mm. Miso for the win. Miso. And then we've got two cloves of garlic. But we're putting in three because we're putting in three because we love, <laughs> love that garlic. And then we've got three tablespoons of hemp seed. Mm -hmm. And this dressing is for two people, so it is still considered a low-fat option um, because yeah. it's only like a tablespoon and a half of hemp seeds, right. each, which is not much. So we're going to put some jalapeno in here. And now if you like hot dressing, you can leave the seeds in your jalapeno. Um, I can already smell this one as a spicy This one. is going to be a, yeah, <laughs> it's like, a, it definitely is a spicy oh, one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. We'll just kind of help the blender out a little bit, cut them into some chunks. I'll rinse this real quick here. All right. And then the spices. I'm just going to show the spices up here really quickly. 
Those are all the spices that we are going to be putting in. Mm. Yeah. Some good amount of spices here. So to read them off. Yes. We've got two teaspoons of curry. And then we've got one teaspoon of the chana masala. Oh, chana chaat. Chana chaat? Well, yes. the, okay. Yeah. It just said chaat masala, but it's it's chana chaat. Oh, chana chaat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. On the thing. Yeah. And then we've got um, a teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of tomato powder, mm. a half teaspoon of smoked paprika, an eighth of a teaspoon of mustard powder, an eighth of a teaspoon of turmeric, and an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper. Yes. So I've got them all just right there, in there, ready to go. Oh, man. oh it's going to be good. Oh, so good. And now you can add more water to this if you want. Like mm -hmm. if you want to make it a little bit thinner of a dressing, mm -hmm. that's totally your call. There if you go. like it thick, leave it as is. If you want it thinner, add more water. Now we're going to do a little vacuum blend on here. Yes, vacuum blending is our thing. <laughs> we just love using the vacuum blender. Yeah, it really makes a big difference for, for certain things like the dressings, mm -hmm. smoothies. And the soup bases, yeah, so nice to have for the soup bases because they're not as frothy um, and you know bubbly. Full of air bubbles, yeah. and they have a, a stronger flavor yep. when you use the vacuum blender because mm. you don't you're not blending a whole bunch of air into your sauce. It's really kind of a bummer because the BioChef vacuum blender that we use is no longer manufacturing that particular craft, the container and the vacuum. But there are a couple other vacuum blenders out there mm -hmm. that's the full base and pitcher. Yeah, combined. like Diet Pro has one, Kuvings has one. Um, I know John Kohler on his website, he's got one for void systems. Ooh, the void. I don't know too many details about what it fits on or if it's like an attachment that and fits I think on. Chris Kendall yeah. also has, I don't know if he has a video. I want to say maybe oh, yeah. he has a video on how he kind of um made up yeah, <laughs> so. kind of like a D diy you know a makeshift for his his uh vitamix craft mm -hmm. but vacuum blending is definitely something that is really amazing to look into mm -hmm. if you're into blending a lot of stuff definitely so nate's yeah. <laughs> All right, we okay. are blended. So let's grab the sauce and it? mix it with the chickpeas. Oh, okay, yeah, here. So got a few, got a few questions if you don't mind, because yeah, if I didn't ask them, I'll lose them. Thank you. So one of them is, is from Jackie. What is a vacuum blender? And then I have two more when you're ready. Okay, so a vacuum blender is usually it's either the whole blender or it's an attachment that fits on the Vitamix, like what we have. So yeah, so here's what ours looks like. And I actually have a, um, it comes with a, a cord that you can plug it into the wall or it also takes batteries. But like I said, this one is, is no longer being manufactured. But as you can see on the top here, this is a vacuum unit. I don't have any batteries in there, so it doesn't, you know, it's not gonna work, but it, it basically sucks all the air out of the pitcher. So when you're blending, you're not blending air into your dressing or your soup base or your smoothie or whatever it is that you're, you're making, like a sauce. And as we know, oxygen starts to um, oxidize what it is that we're blending. So it's going to turn and kind of go, you know, not necessarily like bad, but essentially it's, it's not going to last as long. So something like this is going to really help make your sauces and stuff thicker. But essentially what it is doing is it's just vacuuming out the air that is in there. And if you can, you can't really see, but I'm going to take, I'm going to undo the pressure. And then if you hear, you might be able to hear, there's a little release valve and watch, watch this right here. It starts to, um, so it's, so it's letting air back into it. And so, but that's, that's essentially it. Mm -hmm. Now that's something that we didn't do for the longest time. And now we do. <laughs> we were like, mm, this smells good. Oh my God. We just weren't, we, we, I don't know. Our friend, uh, John Kohler told us about it and we didn't even really like listen to him. We're like, oh yeah, whatever vacuum blending. But 
Then, then we, finally one day we're like, okay, let's try. He got, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we got together with him again and we started to actually think about it. We're like, actually, that makes perfect sense. Like, you don't want to, I mean, we're, here we are trying to, you know. Maximize our nutrition, right? And when you're oxidizing things, you know, things like vitamin C, yeah. they, they are used they to de help de yeah, deal with the oxidation. And they degrade quicker if it's, yeah. if it's done, you know. I mean, you picture when you cut open an apple, Mm -hmm. The apple turns brown pretty quick because of the oxygen touching it. So um, it basically just helps from having it go bad. So now if we were to put that into a jar with a, you know, a vacuum lid, which we've got a couple different mechanisms. This is a really cool one. You can put this right on top of a mason jar with just a regular lid push the button, you can recharge this. This does both size lids, the small mouth or the wide mouth. And this sucks the air out of the jar. And you can do like, let's say, let's say, you know, you've got some, some stuff that you don't want to have. Christmas. So you've got your regular lid. We have, we have a, a different vacuum system as well for these, where you actually have a pump and you can pump out the air and it's a special lid, but say you just have this kind of a lid. This thing is so cool. You just pop it right over top, press the button, and it just shows you the numbers. And it's basically sucking out the rest of the air that's in there. So let's say you have a smoothie and you're making a couple smoothies for the day, or you're making a, a triple batch of dressing, one of your favorite dressings. You can vacuum out the air that is left in there, and it's going to last longer than if you weren't to vacuum out the air because air, the oxygen, breaks stuff down. It oxidizes stuff. This is a really cool unit. Lisa got this for us for Christmas. And I, I think it's going to work out great. We've only used it a few times. Mm -hmm. But that's the whole concept behind vacuum blending yeah. and storing yeah. under vacuum, just removing the air so the air doesn't break stuff down as quick, makes stuff last longer. For the blending, though, stuff is thicker, creamier, delicious. Yes. Thank you. And there's a question if Vitamix sells the attachment and if you can sprout black soybeans or, uh, or black chickpeas. I have never seen black chickpeas. I, now I want to, right. uh, yeah. any pea is good. So chickpeas, black eyed peas, there look at is. that vacuum seal. So now if you were to put oxygen, say if you were to, you know, put stuff in here and you're taking a trip for like a month or something, let's say you could put an oxygen absorber in there, vacuum seal the lid. And that way your stuff, this is some flaxseed, you know, it's going to stay fresh. It also, if you notice the flax came down Right. Right. There's like more space at the top. Yeah. Now. And then to crack the lid so you don't mess the lid up. I like to use my finger as leverage and I put a little knife, you know, just a, a butter knife and just use the leverage of the finger and just pop it. Yeah. But no, Vitamix doesn't sell the attachment. Vitamix actually doesn't have any vacuum blenders, which no. kind of sucks. They should probably get on that. They should. Um, but Dynapro and Kuvings, and I think there's a couple others too. And there's, you, you can get cheap vacuum blenders online as well. But I know, yeah. I wish Vitamix did have I them. hope that it becomes a thing because it is absolutely noticeably yeah. better. It is. In so many ways. And as for the black soybeans, I don't know. I, I would assume so because you can sprout regular soybeans. Yeah. Um, but those aren't ones that we usually sprout. So yeah. you could totally do a little more research and dig into it and see if you can. So here's our sprouted thawed or, you know, frozen and thawed chickpeas. Yeah. Right on top. There we go. Oh man. And then we'll mix those in because the whole point of doing this first, and you could do this like earlier in the day, if you wanted it to really marinate and you could just marinate them in this, this sauce smells so good. <laughs> I'm just like, mm. so we're going to let this sit while we chop the salad. Mm, that is so good. And we're well, starting. You could just eat it like I know soup. you could totally eat your soup. <laughs> All right. So let's get chopping our salad here. Here, I'll do the cucumbers. Okay. Awesome. So we've got, could you grab our bowls? Mm. I'll start. So basically we're starting with a head of lettuce. So you could do any lettuce, you could do romaine, 
Um, the romaine that we were looking at yesterday wasn't the greatest looking romaine, so we went with butterweed. <laughs> it had some sort of like, almost like it had a bug infestation where there was a bunch of, um, they weren't aphids, but they left marks looking like they were aphids. I'm not sure what that uh, deficiency is, but it was it was, didn't really look very appealing. So this is calling for cubed cucumber. But you can make any shape you want. Yeah. It's all up to you. So I'm just cutting the cucumber down in half first and then slicing it um, in fourths. And then we just have these little cubes that we can use. Yeah, we've got, you know, it was nice when we were at the store. The romaine didn't look very great, but the green leaf was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, so we this just, is really nice. We went with some green leaf and we got some iceberg lettuce. We love iceberg lettuce too for certain salads. <laughs> this is a lot of lettuce. Green leaf is. It's like it's it's uh just the way that it's shaped, the curliness of it always mm -hmm. is a bit more full. Right, uh, Instagram, let me just say something. Hi, Instagram folks. How are you? So the recipe is in the show notes. You can't see show notes on Instagram. We have it completely written out for you on YouTube. It's all there for you. So thank you. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's all over on YouTube. Plus this recipe will be in my new ebook, mm -hmm. which has your name on it, Chef OJ. Cool. Coming in May. Coming in May. Got your name on it. You bet. Make it raw. Volume three. Mm. With Lissa and Chef AJ. So good. All right. All right. There is our lettuce, our lettuce. green leaf lettuce. Now, how we want to decorate this, we're going to kind of each decorate our own salads. So I we want to do broccoli. If you want to massage that, I'll chop yes. the broccoli. Okay, so massaging the kale. Um, <laughs> so for massaging the kale, most most recipes call for oil and salt mm -hmm. to massage. But you know, if you just like roll it up, it's just it's, amazing. It works just the same. It just breaks down the yeah. fiber a little bit more and makes it so much more enjoyable to eat. Like here, look at the difference between all I did, <laughs> all I did was this one here has been massaged just rolling it around in my hand and this one is not so it just makes it softer it's so nicer, much nicer easier to eat it is so much nicer it's a huge difference yeah so we're, we're also this recipe is also calling for a cup of chopped broccoli mm -hmm. just rolling it around like play-doh <laughs> In a way, like making making a ball, like yeah. a a date ball. Date ball. And of course, you could add a little bit of dressing if you wanted Ooh. something a little softer for the massaging of the yeah. kale. You can totally do that because um, of the miso in the dressing can help with that. But again, you don't need anything to massage kale. It's really yeah. nice. Jackie says massaging kale is a game changer. Yeah, such it a really game is. You can get so much more kale in when massaging yeah. it. And it's just so much nicer to eat. Mm -hmm. I'll get some uh here. Let me put the let's put the cucumbers on. How do you want okay. yours? I'll, put, I'll have mine in the center. In the center? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's get this kale down here. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Yes, yes. It's going to be a delicious lunch. <laughs> I know, I'm really excited for this. Mm -hmm. This dressing. So good. And let me cut up. Actually, I'll do the tomatoes. We've got okay. a couple of really nice heirloom tomatoes here. Yes. Who does most of the uncooking in your house? <laughs> Nate does. Nate does. He does a lot of the salad prep and, and all of that. Um, but when it's recipe creation time, I'm usually in here like 
all day. <laughs> yep. When, when it comes to recipe creation, that's Lisa's department. What I do is I just follow the recipe. <laughs> it's so easy. Uh, I love it. And it turns out pro every time. <laughs> You're awesome. All right. Yeah, these tomatoes are going to be good. Mm, so mm. good. So I'm going to, how am I going to do this? There's always like, I always wonder like, how am I, how's my salad going to look once I start loading it up with stuff? Uh, we've got some raisins here. Uh, I believe it's a half cup of raisins. So again, this recipe, for those of you who are on YouTube watching and you have the show notes, the recipe is enough for two salads. So dressing for two salads and salad for two salads. So um, I'm just gonna put my quarter cup worth on my cucumber here and then I can have the Yeah, rest. and say maybe you're uh, single or your your partner or loved one is, is not wanting a salad or gonna be home or something or others, you can take this, still follow the recipe, mm -hmm. and then before you dress it, you know, I mean, might as well, you know, cut up the whole thing, put the lettuce separate. Cucumbers are tricky. I would always put cucumbers in their own Tupperware by themselves because they're pretty watery. But the kale, the cabbage, the carrots, you could put all that together if you're going to eat it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then you've got lunch made for tomorrow. Easy peasy. Or maybe you're doing this for dinner. You know, you've got lunch made for the next day. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier when you make a double batch or like chop extra lettuce and, and vegetables for the next day. Yeah. Blend a double batch of dressing so that you have some dressing for tomorrow. You don't have to do the blending. It's easier when you do the food prep like that so that you have extra bonus stuff. Mm. So oh, good. I'm excited about those. I think I want them all in the center. Do you? I'm just going to follow her. <laughs> Hers is going to look really good. Oh. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, I didn't do the raisins. Well, that's okay. That's all right. I'll sprinkle raisins around the edge here. Okay. Then if you want to do the red onion. All over. <laughs> all right. Red onion. Let's go. I am going to take this minced broccoli. Now, if you have issues digesting broccoli, just put a small amount in, just enough for your gut microbiome to enjoy and chop them up really, really small into like little, almost not really powder, but like, you know. Real small. Really small. Um, because the more you chop the broccoli, the more the enzyme myrosinase can interact with the glucosinolates and make sulforaphane. So that's why we do that. Now, do you ever put do you ever put this in one of your wraps instead of eating it as a salad? You could totally. We could we would put all of the ingredients like we would massage the kale, we would put whole leaves of the lettuce as the base, um the shredded carrots, we would add the cabbage, you know, sliced tomatoes and then we would use the sauce as the dip i don't know if we would add the chickpeas we could mash the chickpeas mm. and add those inside too but yeah yeah totally if it was all dressed up that would be a great one to put uh in the wrap okay i'm gonna make space in the center for my oh you're doing that in the center i'll do the cabbage there i'm gonna do carrot mm. and then we have the kale outside. maybe i'll put the kale in real quick okay Yeah. <laughs> this is so fun it's you know that's that's another thing that we really love about what we do what we share we just love to make our food pretty i think i'm going to follow along with you and have this in the center oh she's following oh. me this time oh my god <laughs> that was a good idea and that dressing smells so good with these onions and then yes and Lissa really loves onions. I do. I, I really love onions. I eat a lot of onions. I'll just put that right there. Looking good. Yes. Oh, man. So excited. I really hope you guys can try this dressing out. 
And even more so, I really hope that you guys get into doing the sprouted chickpeas because my gosh, are they amazing. They really, they really have a great texture to them. Yes, yeah, so I'm putting all the onions in the center. Mm. And then I want the sauce in the center. Yes. All oh, right. The sauce in the center. Yes. All right. <laughs> Let me just there get a little sauce. <laughs> we like to play with our food. <laughs> get a soft spot. Beautiful. Yes. All right. Okay. So we've got our salads here. Ooh, look at those. And here is our sauce. Okay, so we have our sauce. Oh, did you want to grab the camera? Yeah, here, let's do that. Get close. Okay, here we go. Mind the shake here. Ooh, hello. <laughs> okay, so we've got our sauce and the chickpeas that have been sitting around in there. And basically, I'm going to grab a bigger scoopy scoop. Here, one sec, you guys. Apologize about that. Uh-oh, where'd you go? Make it a little cleaner. That's that's a social media tip 101. Clean your lens before taking every single photograph, and your photos will be so much nicer. Just clean the lens. <laughs> Pro tip. All right, here we go. Look at Ready? that dressing. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yes, yes. Sweet chickpea curry. Oh. oh my gosh. Yeah, and you could just eat that like a soup if you <laughs> wanted to. Yeah. Let's get you another piece. Or if you're into potatoes or rice, put that right on top. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Mm. That looks amazing. Yes, it does. Yes. Ah. Beautiful. There we go. Look at those. Is is the white bowl yours and the other one Nate's? Yes. Yes. Nate's is the brown bowl. This, yeah, we we even have names for them. <laughs> mine's Celeste, right? And mine's Woody. Woody. Celeste and Woody. That's what those are our bowls names. <laughs> Because we do eat salads out of different bowls. Like it depends on what we're making, which bowl we want to use. Because sometimes, sometimes the bowl changes the experience, yeah. right? So yeah. these two bowls are what we usually eat. So we're like, you want to use Celeste? What do you? I got this. <laughs> I got this bowl at Ross Dress for Less of all places for twelve dollars, and it was such a nice bowl. And I would take it with me in my backpack to work. And this was how I would eat my lunch and even like if I had a lot of fruit for breakfast I would have that out of this bowl it's been a great bowl yes love it it is a little heavy though of course because it's wood oh what do you got there I've got some chili so you can actually like sprinkle you could sprinkle cilantro on top of this I'm gonna put a little extra pepper. it's got pepper in the dressing but I'm gonna put a little extra you want some I sugar? would love some do you want some chili sure great Jack Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are just like dried chili flakes, mirage, oh, yeah. mirage chilies. Beautiful. But that's how it's done. And right. there, lunch is ready. Lunch is ready to go. <laughs> lunch is ready to go. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Yay. Not bad. Yes. Oh my gosh, so good. And look at, we even have a little bit of time. Perfect. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, if there's any other questions. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. I just licked the spoon. <laughs> yeah, these look great. They need to get photos taken of them. So, I mean, if we are going to eat one on camera, it would have to be one of them. But. <laughs> right. Yeah, of course, we are going to eat these. I would like to take a couple pictures, too, mm -hmm. um, before I do eat. And I also have a call coming at in 15 minutes. I've got to I've got to jump on a call in 15 minutes, so I'm going to be eating this after that call. Oh, yeah. So I don't want to mix it up just yet because once the dressing's all mixed, you know, like it's best to eat it right away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For sure. 
I also give time for the chickpeas to marinate. I'm excited with the tomatoes and the raisins in there yeah. um, as well, because that's a nice combo. So um, Bernadette said that she doesn't know much about sprouting. What kind of chickpeas and lentils do you sprout? Can you use the dried kind at the grocery store? She's very interested in this way of eating. Yeah, you know, that's a great question. And the best thing to do is to get seeds that are meant for sprouting, mm -hmm. like lentils. This is the Anthony's chickpeas um, and trying to like get the glare to not do its thing. But this is linked, like Lisa was saying, this is linked in the description. But if you go on, um, you can do an Amazon search. Both of our stores, our Amazon stores have uh, chickpeas and, and the lentils in there. But if you just do an internet search or an Amazon search, Google search, and just search sprouting for lentils, yeah. yeah, lentils for sprouting or, you know, beans and seeds for sprouting. They have gone through a different process in a way uh, to make sure that you're going to get the best germination rate. Um, ones that are in the bulk or in the bags on the shelf in the grocery store, most of those ones, they think that you're going to cook them. So, uh, you know, you might have, you know, just not as great of a... Uh, germination rate yeah also when they're when they're labeled for sprouting they have been tested for pathogens as well so you're less likely way less likely to get any cross contamination going on with them especially the smaller seeds like broccoli and clover and all of that um but you know if if the only option you have is the bulk bin yeah. you to go with it right they, yeah just they'll, be aware that they're not work. meant for sprouting. like mung beans yeah. mung beans would be a safe one that we've done mung beans are fast yeah they sprout like <laughs> yeah, overnight and you're ready yeah. to eat them the next day and you can get those out of the bulk area or bags but yeah like Lisa was saying you know the pathogen aspect is really big too you know if you're getting seeds that are meant for sprouting you're going to have the best mm -hmm. uh germination rate and, and less likely to have any issues mm -hmm. yeah mom sprouting seeds um i think they're sprouting.com and then there's uh true leaf market they have like tons and tons of different kinds of seeds and beans. yeah and perfect if, foods inc as well right. 800 wheatgrass they have some lentils that are meant for sprouting too so just do a google search too if you're not going to you know click the link or go you know say amazon just type in <laughs> sprouting seeds sprouting beans mm -hmm. and they'll they'll pop up nice there's a question from david do you have ever have any issues sprouting chickpeas mine rot every second or third batch yeah, you know, we had that issue too, where they would smell funky and they were just really, you, you didn't want to eat them. And I think that, well, let's see, I think that those ones that we were using were out of the bulk bin. They, they weren't, weren't actually, that's why I got the Anthony's, um, the, on the, not on the label on this bag, they've changed the labeling, but on the, on the actual advertisement on Amazon, it says sprouting on the bag so i know that they're good for sprouting specifically yeah. another thing that you might want to do is the bigger the seed the more often you need to rinse and drain so you could even do it like four times a day and just really shake it really good and get all of the sliminess off of yeah. them because even when you do soak them you get like the I don't even it's know if it's the aquafaba coming yeah. up or whatever, but it's like this like foamy foamness that happens when you're soaking them. Yeah. I just scrape that off and I change the soap water out like two, like one or two times during the entire process of soaking it. 48 hours. Yeah, 48 yeah. hours. So I'll change it like once or twice. And then when they are in the sprouting phase for the 24 hours, that's you want to rinse and drain often and you don't have to do it long because most people, when they try to sprout chickpeas, they're waiting for the tail to get like, you know, an inch long. Mm -hmm. It's just too long for chickpeas unless you're growing them in a garden. Um, but yeah, for eating, you don't even really need to wait for the tail. Some of them get like little tiny itty bitty tails, but yeah, for the most part, they're ready to go. Just rinse them really well. Clean water. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we've got our salad. Yeah, there's a question about washing lettuce. And it was, let's see. How important is it to wash lettuce and produce? I'm very picky about washing, especially lettuce and broccoli. Well, if you're picky about it, then wash it. <laughs> uh, that's the most important thing. You know, if that's going to mess with your, your mental state, then it's best just to wash it. 
We don't really wash our lettuce every single time. Like this one here, we got it out of the bag and we just chopped it up and, and went to it. Um, of course, you know, there's footage out there, mm -hmm. social media footage, and, you know, micro cameras and stuff. And, you know, of course, like we're not going to be able to get rid of every single little thing. But if it does mess with you and you want to have stuff clean, then by all means, wash it. What we would do is we would just wash maybe a little baking soda, a little apple cider vinegar, and just kind of like, you know, after we've chopped everything up, just soak it in a bowl and just kind of like toss it around. And then, of course, spin dry lettuces. Tomatoes, we washed our tomatoes before we put them on our counter, dry them off real well. Nectarines, we always wash our nectarines too because it's real soft skin. It is best to rinse and, you know, uh, wipe your, your, like melons, if it's got kind of a little funky feel on the outside, I always like to wash the melon and dry it up real good with like, a, you know, a microfiber towel. Because, you know, when you cut something, you're dragging whatever is on the skin through yeah. the, the melon. But another yeah. thing with lettuces too, is, or specifically cabbage, once you take off the outer leaves, the inside's clean. Yeah. Like you don't have to worry about that for the most part. But if it's visibly dirty, we'll wash it yeah. for sure. Um, but for the most part, you know, if it looks good, yeah. we might just rinse or... Lettuces, yeah. like the kale, you know, I did do a rinse this morning. Um, the broccoli, same kind of rinsed it, you know, like um, having the water go, you know, from the stem down through the top. Um, but this lettuce looked really good. There wasn't any uh, granules of, of sand or dirt. If there's any signs of any kind of dirt, of course, you know, washing it because that's yeah. the worst to yeah, eat to a salad with. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> if it's important to you, wash mm -hmm. it. And I saw, let's see, um, I sent my mother-in-law some sprouting seeds to add to her diet. She went ahead and planted them instead and now has a backyard full of radish and fenugreek. Yeah. Hey. Oh, that's awesome. Great. <laughs> that's a funny story. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But you can also um, use microgreen seeds for sprouting as well. Sure. So if you, if you look online and you find microgreen seeds. Microgreen seeds. Yeah. And you know, it's, what's cool is everything starts from a seed. So yeah. really like most things can be sprouted mm -hmm. or grown into microgreens. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, there are certain strains that do a bit better. Oh, yes. Yeah. Each one has kind of its own preferences mm -hmm. when it comes to watering and soil. And that's all in Nate's course, in his microgreens course, <laughs> for anyone interested. Mm -hmm. um, Anna says, do you ever get the pre-chopped mixed greens in plastic bags? I find it saves me a lot of time and gives me more variety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get the ones in the boxes. Yeah, there's the ones yeah. in the boxes from the store. But if you go into the farmer's market and they've got yeah. them like pre-bagged mixed greens. Oh, that's the best, are, especially from yeah. a farmer's market. A lot of times they have, uh, you know, great varieties, real tender, but yeah, we buy the stuff in the, in the, uh, in the bins. And then when we take it out, when we do our salad, we like to chop it up further so that they're yeah. smaller pieces. Just, just like one of these, yeah, like you know? Yep. Yeah. But the thing is with those is it's almost like you have to eat them um within like two days <laughs> days because stuff does start to turn pretty quick because they're so such soft leaves it's always the yeah. spinach i feel like they, <laughs> or the red leaf that yeah, goes the red leaf first and, the <laughs> and then of course once it starts to get funky then it, it's whatever it's touching starts to yeah so best to like eat that stuff right away but it does save time and it is nice addition nice thanks jennifer says she's sprouting lentils for the pineapple teriyaki wrap that she's going to make tomorrow. Well, yes, good choice. And That's a good Charles one. asks, do you have to cook the chickpeas or can you just rehydrate them? Yeah, so what we do for, for this particular recipe is we soaked them for the 48 hours. Changing the water like twice a day is best if you can do that. Rinsing them for another uh, 12 hours or 24 hours, I should say, 24 hours. So it's a total of like, what, 72? It's 36, I think. 36? Total. Well, 48. Oh, so, for 72. 70, yeah, so 72, 72 hours, hours the whole make. process. Yeah. Then, you know, strain those out, rinse them real good, freeze them. And then what we did was we just thawed them out with a little bit of warm water. So mm -hmm. they're uncooked, they're sprouted, but they're tender, mm -hmm. just like a cooked chickpea. It's hard not to tap in. Do it, do it. Nice. And there's a question. Have you ever tried using, uh, to cut your produce using salad scissors? Mm. Oh. There's some salad scissors that I have in a box <laughs> um, under the cupboard, but we don't use them 
very often. But totally, They'd that's be good fun. for herbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we use yeah we use scissors for certain things. <laughs> but and I also have like one of those bamboo um, salad knives. It's got like real big serrades on there just to kind of like it gives it kind of a torn effect. That's pretty fun. It's always fun to like use certain tools for certain things for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, what's, makes what's your favorite kitchen tool? Mm, oh probably the God. Vitamix, and then of course mm -hmm. our knives. Like, mm -hmm. gosh, we would be like without a knife, it would be. It would just be like the spiralizer too. The spiralizer is great. Yeah. The hydrator. I mean, the that's one of my fun. favorites. <laughs> but the, the, the blender, the high speed blender and the knife. Yeah. Those I are feel the like basics. those are, yeah, those are things that we're using multiple times a day, every day. Mm -hmm. When you say spiralizer, do you have an electric one? You know, we do have an electric one and it's made by Veggie Bullet, but it's discontinued. Gosh, another thing that's discontinued is a real bummer. But um, Trivest, Trivest has one. We don't have one of theirs I, yet. I just got the Trivest and I can't wait oh. to figure out how to use it. Yeah. Okay. Nice. All right. Well, we'll have to use it when we come and see you. Yeah, um, it looks so cool because like if the, the ones that aren't electric, it's really hard to spiralize beets, you know, yeah. like really hard oh, stuff. Yeah, not electric. there's there's one that we really do like, which is called the Joyce Chen. And you know, I don't know if they make those anymore. This either. is another, yeah, this is another one that's discontinued. It's a Joyce Chen spiralizer. This is the bottom that holds the stuff. But what's really cool is you've got... Um, you could do just regular ribbons or you flip this up and there's fine teeth in there and it does really fine angel hair. And that's what I really yeah. like about that one. It's nice for carrots and beets and stuff or oh. parsnips. If you want to get like the really fine, like yeah. white. Oh, yeah, it's, so good. it's a neat tool. I know. I wish they made it still. I know. Sucks. <laughs> Part of me is thought like we need to get it. You know what? I have the Joyce Chen. You can have my angel hair one. I never use it. Thank you. Oh. We will gladly take it. I haven't <laughs> used it in 20 years. So the chances of me using it, I'm just going to give it to what you. We'll have to do, you we'll too. have to bring some taco shells with us. Yes. We're going to have tacos with it. And then chicken. we can spiralize chunks of carrot. And it makes it kind of like, it, it's got kind of like a, you know, it looks like grated cheddar cheese or something, but it's just so fun. We yeah, don't really do wash it too, looks like it. So Susan says, Hi, Lisa and Nate. When you first went raw, did you need to take any digestive enzymes or probiotics to help digest the raw foods? No. No. What I did was I would just leave the room <laughs> if I had gas, because of course, gas is definitely a part of it's a raw, yeah. a raw diet or any diet for that matter. But I did pass gas more than I do now. I, I didn't take any enzymes or any yeah, probiotics yeah. or anything though. I might have taken a couple probiotics in the very beginning because I was using up what I had left in my fridge. I, but I hate to do this. I have to go. I've got to call at one o'clock. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll wrap it up and listen just a couple more questions in the chat and then I'll let you guys go. Um, so Pam says, my climate is a hot I desert. Anything to keep in mind regarding sprouting? So what was the question again? My climate is a hot desert. Anything to keep in mind regarding sprouting? Rinse more often, I would say. We live in the desert. We're in Las Vegas, so it's really dry here. Um, I find that rinsing more often helps a lot because especially when you're doing things like radishes, cabbages, a lot of the cruciferous vegetables, when you're sprouting them, um, their tails start to get fuzzy. And I know countless people always message me and they're like, I tried doing sprouts, but they got fuzzy and there's fuzz everywhere, they went moldy. But that's not mold. It's actually the root has all these like miniature microscopic hairs that come off because the root is thirsty. It's looking for water. So it's kind of like, you know, when a cat gets scared and their tail puffs up like that, that's what happens to the roots of these little seeds. They're just looking for water, they're thirsty. So if you start to see the fuzz on the roots and it's very uniform and they look like a puffed up scared cattail, that just means that your sprouts are thirsty and it's time for a rinse. So rinsing more often, like usually you, you rinse twice a day, like morning and night, but in the desert, we like to do it three times a day because we notice our seeds do get that like fuzzy tail, but it's not mold, so don't throw them away. <laughs> Thank you. And Susanna says, do you have a knife sharpener you like and could you show it? Um, we do have a few different ones. Um, 
I don't know where the other ones are right now, but this is one that we have. It has a, I don't know if I can pop this up. Anyways, this is the one we use. It's kind of got like a little ceramic roller in the center. And really all we do is run the knife through it multiple times. And then we wash the knife because there's gonna be like microscopic shavings left on the knife and you wanna wash it really well before you use it to chop your vegetables. Like don't sharpen it and then chop immediately because you're gonna get a lot of the metal shavings in your food, which you don't want. So this is one that we get, we have, we have a few different kinds. Usually they come with like a knife kit that we bought or they've been gifted to us. Um, so our, there are different ones. We don't have any like favorite ones. I know, <laughs> Nate for a little while was really getting into like the stones and the water and all of that to sharpen the knives. And he watched this one video. It was a joke video. And the guy was like, if you're ever lost in the middle of the woods, just start talking about how you sharpen your knife and somebody will come save you. <laughs> so, because apparently in the knife sharpening world, there's a lot of, you know, like, don't do it this way, do it this way, do it. So there's a lot of confusing information out there on like, what is the best way to sharpen the knife? But we just use a regular, you know, standard sharpener and sharpen like, I would say at least three times a week we're sharpening our knives because it is nice to have sharp knives. Or if you have like really, really expensive, nice knives, you can always take them into where you bought them and have them professionally sharpen them if you want to do that too. Perfect. Well, thank you. So next month you're coming on after Mother's Day, so you can't do a Mother's Day brunch. And I think next month will just be me. So that's okay. yeah, that's okay. We can do something special together. Um, yeah. He is going back to Oregon to help his brother and sister finalize a lot of stuff that's been going on with the family. So I'll, it'll just be me. <laughs> we'll share something fun for sure. Oh, um, one of the viewers on Instagram says you explain everything so well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Yep. Oh, um, Anna wants to know, I was going to let you go, but Anna says, do you eat dehydrated foods every single day or do you have days that you only eat fresh food? Um, you know, it kind of depends. Sometimes we do, uh, sometimes we eat, you know, we'll have like a dehydrated marinated vegetable dish added to like our cucumber noodles or something like that. We'll, or we'll have a wrap, maybe we'll have a burger for dinner. So we do incorporate um, dehydrated foods into our diet, but I wouldn't say it's every single day. Um, definitely definitely many days, but most days we're just doing fruit in the morning, fruit for snacks, which is a given every single day. And then lunch is typically a salad and dinner is typically another salad. That's like the standard day that we usually have. But if we get creative or we're going out or we're having friends over or whatever, we usually make a little bit more, you know, dehydrated stuff. But honestly, as long as you're drinking enough water and you have fresh stuff with the dehydrated foods, I don't, I don't notice any difference regardless if I am or not. So to me, it doesn't matter. Uh, but I know some people are a little more sensitive to that hydration level. But again, I, we drink, you know, on most days, a fair amount of water, depending on the day. Some days we forget. I haven't had a lot of water today, though. But um, it really depends on you and your preference as to how much dehydrated food you have. Great. Well, thanks, Lisa. You make raw food fun. Aw, thank you. This is so much fun. Always love being on your show and sharing delicious meals. Enjoy your sprouted chickpea sweet curry. We will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if you want the recipe, it's right below the show notes. Show notes are only visible on YouTube and they're not visible, unfortunately, on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram because we don't have 5,000 characters at our disposal there. Thanks everyone so much for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back at 9 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow for Dr. Esser's prescription for health. Dr. Stefan Esser, a Harvard trained sports medicine plant-based doctor. Oh, wait a second. I got the wrong week. It's Dr. Baxter Montgomery. Hold on, hold the phone. How do I mix him up? He's the next week, Dr. Esser. But Dr. Baxter Montgomery, who is a plant-based cardiologist in Houston, is going to talk about whether or not you can lose too much weight on a plant-based diet. I just saw your question, Timberly. Lisa, is it a bad idea to have a wrap every day? I think it's a great idea to have I think a it's a great idea. <laughs> I agree. Somebody made them for me. I eat them every day, multiple times a day. <laughs>
We will be making new wraps. Oh my so God. I cannot enjoy. wait. Cannot wait. All right. Take care, Lissa. Thanks, Nate. And thanks, all of you. I hope to see you tomorrow.